This is a video abstract for the paper, Diversity in Pitch Perception Revealed by Task Dependence, authored by Melinda McPherson and Josh McDermott. Pitch is one of the most common terms used to describe sounds. It allows us to order sounds from low to high. Pitch is an important feature for identifying sounds we hear in the environment. Pitch allows us to understand the difference between a question and a statement. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. And pitch enables us to hear melodies and harmonies in music. But scientifically, what is pitch? Pitch is usually defined as the perceptual attribute of a sound corresponding to its repetition rate. Pictured is a sound wave of a short tone. The sound wave is what would be recorded by a microphone. The pressure measured by the microphone is plotted on the y-axis and time is plotted on the x-axis. You can see that the pressure varies over time in a repetitive manner. This is the result of a repetitive process in the real world. For example, a guitar string vibrating back and forth when it is plucked or a violin string vibrating back and forth when it is bowed. The rate of repetition is called the fundamental frequency of the sound. Periodic sounds have harmonics, or overtones. I'll show you these harmonics by singing two notes. You'll see bright bands of energy pop up as I sing. Those are the harmonics. The harmonics you see are integer multiples of the fundamental frequency of my voice. Generally, it is thought that sounds with a high fundamental frequency are perceived as being high in pitch and sounds with a low fundamental frequency are perceived as being low in pitch. But let's imagine that you hear two notes and you want to know which is higher in pitch. You could solve this problem by estimating the fundamental frequency of these two notes. One will have a higher fundamental frequency than the other. However, as you can see here, you could also track that all of the harmonics shifted together and use that to determine that the second note was higher. It is thus not obvious that pitch perception would always involve estimating the fundamental frequency of a sound. We wanted to investigate how people solved problems like this, as well as more complex problems, in real-world hearing. To probe for multiple pitch perception mechanisms, we developed stimuli that are inharmonic. We took harmonic sounds, like this, sounds that repeat in time and have evenly spaced harmonics, and we randomly jittered the harmonics so that they were no longer evenly spaced. These inharmonic sounds are inconsistent with any single fundamental frequency and sound like this. You'll notice that this inharmonic tone has a different sound quality than that of the harmonic tone. Inharmonic tones do sometimes occur naturally. For example, percussion instruments like the marimba and xylophone are slightly inharmonic. Our hypothesis was that if people perceive pitch by estimating fundamental frequency, they would be unable to perform tasks with the inharmonic stimuli. But if people could do a task with inharmonic stimuli, it would suggest that they are not using the fundamental frequency and are instead figuring out the correct answer some other way, perhaps by tracking the harmonics. We tested essentially every pitch-related task we could conceive and implement. These range from discriminating two tones to melody recognition and celebrity voice recognition. You can try all 11 of our main tasks on our webpage. When listening to examples, you'll be able to tell that some tasks are really hard when the stimuli are inharmonic, and some are quite easy. The main finding of this paper was that there are different effects of our inharmonic manipulation depending on the task. Tasks that involved estimating musical intervals were more difficult when the sounds were inharmonic. For example, listen to this melody with harmonic tones you'll be able to tell that the second to last note sounds sour, as though it was played by mistake. Now, listen to a similar melody rendered with inharmonic notes. You'll notice that it's much harder to hear whether the second to last note fits in with the melody or not. In this task, in order to determine whether a note is out of key, you need to accurately detect the interval relationships between notes. We found that tasks like this, tasks that involved estimating interval sizes, were more difficult when the sounds were inharmonic. 
We also found that people had more difficulty recognizing voices when they were resynthesized to be inharmonic. Try to identify this well-known speaker. It has been a dream of mine since I was a little girl. While you may have correctly guessed that this was Ellen DeGeneres, most people found it easier to identify speakers when their voices were harmonic, like this. This really has been a dream of mine since I was a little girl. However, tasks that involved detecting the direction of pitch changes, both in musical context and in speech, were unaffected by making sounds inharmonic. For example, listen to these two five-note melodies. You'll be able to tell that their contours, the pattern of up and down movements in pitch, are the same. You can tell that these note contours were the same even though all the notes are inharmonic and have no fundamental frequency. Altogether, what these results suggest is that real-world pitch perception is mediated by several different mechanisms. The textbook definition of pitch is partially correct. We need to use fundamental frequency sometimes, for example, when hearing musical intervals and when recognizing voices. But when you only need to determine how a sound changes in pitch, you can solve this problem without estimating the fundamental frequency.